Hi. Is anybody there? <laughs> Coming at you live from the California hills. And look, I'm in a little slice of heaven. <laughs> look, I've got the blue, purple. I've got my giant sage. And we're surrounded in California poppies. Yay. So here we are. We got a little bit of a reprieve. The sun just popped behind a cloud for five seconds. We've got helicopters going everywhere because everybody is filming. They're all filming the, um, the flowers because they're crazy. They're crazy beautiful. Look, look at the lake on the other side of the lake, all in the hills. You can see the snow covered hills. We got these California poppies. My landlord says they're not California poppies. They're daisies, they're just ground cover. And I said, nope, not where I'm going. The orange are definitely the California poppies. And these are, these smell amazing. I don't know what they are, oh, but the bees love them. So I'll let you guys take a look. I hiked up. I can't see anything because the sun, oh, here comes the sun again. <laughs> I left my bag down there, but let me show you where I came up. Remember the last time I hiked with you guys and it was raining? Well, I came up the backside this time. So there's the fire station where I came up from the last time. And remember, I hiked up that way, which means I'm going to have to go there again. But this is where I came first. And then I thought, oh, why didn't I come here? Because this side is completely covered. Look at this. <laughs> Look everywhere. It's so beautiful. Let me see if I can see what you guys are saying to me. Aren't they amazing? Hi, look at them. California poppies. And baby's breath and bridal veil. And I don't know what these bluebells, right? So I was gonna do the reading sitting on this hill inside of all of these poppies where I just started, but the sun's come back now and it's hot. And where did I leave my bag? <laughs> God. Oh my God, I get so excited climbing around that I don't even know where I go. Oh my God, where did I take them? I think I might've been over here because I'm really slippery here. I feel like I'm gonna fall down the hill. Oh my God, I'm wearing sandals as always. Okay, did I walk along here? <laughs> oh. oh my God, I think I was over here. Yeah, because there's that big poppy or big sage bush. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is where I was. Look at this, you guys. Isn't this beautiful? We're facing the wrong direction though. I actually could put my back to the, sit right here in the sage. That's what I could do so I could see you. Cause that's what we're looking at. I can't see shit. Hold on. What are you guys saying? Sorry, I've got to give you not so sexy of a view because I can't see anything. <laughs> I can't see. Hold on. I think I'm gonna have to go on the other side. Because for one, it's like 80 degrees. How does it go from being like 30 to 80 in like days? This is crazy. Thank God it's not this hot in Sedona yet. I'm telling you, it's always consistently hotter here than it is in Sedona, which is crazy because it's the Arizona desert. <clears throat> hi. <laughs> I did say hi, but nobody was there yet. And uh, I need, I needed something like a little lace cover up so that I didn't get fried in the sun. And oh God, there's people coming, damn. And so of course, what do I have? It's black, which makes me hotter. But um, this is why I came up here. Um, I'm boiling to death. So I don't think that that is gonna give us enough shade. Ooh, there's hummingbird hawk moths. That's our totem for the day. But I can't see what you guys are saying. I'm gonna have to take us over the hill. Although I would really like to see that. There's one right there. Oh, let me turn you around. Hold on, shit. I can't see. There. There's hummingbird hawk moths. Remind me. Well, I'll remember that when I go to edit the video. But right now there's an explosion of butterflies and you wonder why. Everyone was like, wow, why are there so many butterflies? Because they've never seen so many flowers in their life in California, which is really sad. You know, people think California is, you gotta go to California. Excuse me, sorry. You gotta go to California. Such a beautiful place to be. You know, you get here and it's a dust bowl. Well, Southern California anyway. Um, so I'm gonna have to go over this way where we were before. I gotta go down the backside. And as we go down the backside, let's ask 
that the rattlesnakes let their presence be known. Remember the last couple times I was hiking, the rattlesnakes let me know ahead of time where they were hanging out because they like to come out and sun on the war in the warm. There's all their houses. Okay, guys. I just need to not pick a, a rattlesnake den to sit my ass down on. And I think I'm walking through their field. So stay where you are, guys. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. You don't want to bite me. Shit, I'm freaking myself out. <laughs> I am. Okay, I'm going to go right here in the shade right now for a second. I know it's not as sexy in here, but at least I can see what you guys are saying. Ah. <sighs> You need to send me a message, Lori. Okay. Hey, Gina. Hi. You're coming to Cali in May? Good for you. Good for you. So I'm doing today's reading out here. And it's not as sexy right here, I realize. Right? But it's cooler. I guess I... And, and I came up the last time, remember? I hoofed it up this way. And then I hiked it up that way and I did the reading up. I can, actually, that's where I should do the reading. It's where I was the last time. Up at the top. Because it was windy up there and cool and it's freaking hot as hell. So, um, it's not as pretty right here. <laughs> hey! I'm just saying hi to all you guys. <laughs> um... And when I started, I, I did a little video before I started this, and uh, I said I said I was going to hike here, and I, and I didn't have the, um, the camera set up so that I could turn it back around. And I said, well, I told you guys I'd be here and do the reading in the California flowers, in the field of flowers, and here I am. And then I said, and here I am in another form as well. And right then a red hawk came and circled above me, so I got her on the video. And I was trying to zoom in, but the sun was in my eyes, so I couldn't see shit. So I'm hoping that I got her up close. I zoomed in, but a lot of times I'll zoom in and I'll completely miss the Red Hawk, <laughs> which is a message, right? You try and look at something up close and then you miss actually the, pick, the, the, the message that you're supposed to get, which is actually something I need to talk about today in our reading. Um, remember yesterday when we got the Queen of Swords, or we called her the Queen of Air in the reading, and uh, we were saying that she's very truthful, uh, she's blunt, she's analytical, um, she doesn't as she comes across a lot of times not showing very much emotion remember and I said she's honest right Sometimes she can be someone that lies and I don't do that and I said that you know that at, at that time for the reading we were supposed to be calling out the Queen of Swords Cutting people off right you know, sometimes you have to be the Queen of Swords to cut people off in your life that are toxic in your environment well that came out for another reason as well because I, after I did the reading, I did a, I did a few late night calls, and uh, I have on my my psychic hotline on Keen, they have like a chat line, and uh, you have I, I usually can talk in my headset, but it, but it always messes up, and and half the words are messed up, and then I end up having a type, and I really type really bad. I type with my middle finger and my right pointer finger, and I misspell all my words because I'm trying to shuffle and and look at the animal messengers and listen to the songs and listen to spirit <laughs> it's like a disaster so this person came on and it was interesting because the person was mirroring what's going on what I've been shown going on in my twins life and I was like wow I mean that's not a surprise right but the person was talking about the job they were in they were gonna leave this job and um, they were very very qualified in, in their field and, and yet it was a toxic environment and they wanted to move on and, and they knew that they were wondering if they were gonna get fired or if they, if they were gonna walk away and how it was gonna go and uh, I got, I mean, it was a really good reading. It was, it was, yes, you are, you're moving and you're moving now. You're moving on now. And, and the person was nervous and yet everything was gonna work out and amazing for them. And so I was trying to, t and the person was telling me that they were uh, um, a psychiatrist or some kind of, worked in the medical field. And the person was very, very um, highly qualified. And uh, it's funny, you know, I feel like Moses stuttering, you know, when people like that call me. But I'm good at my, what my field too, right? So um, the person was telling me that they had mastered the art of um, codependency. They mastered the art of codependency. And I said, why would you want to master the art of codependency? That's such a toxic thing to be, codependent. And the person said, I've mastered it. And I said, okay, but that's why you have so much drama in your life because the person was saying they had all this drama and they wanted to get away from it. And I said, you've mastered the art of codependency. That's like, that's a sick system. 
and we, we know the reading was going really really well they were getting very good information and and then the person kept saying to, I don't think you are hearing what I'm saying or no the person said I don't feel because we had a big long conversation and I was I, I was re repeating and the person says well you're, you're tapping in you know to the underlying issues very well but I need more um, specifics and I said this is very specific it's telling you that you need to leave now it's telling you that it's going to be very successful it's telling you that your environment is incredibly toxic and codependent and you're telling me that you have mastered the art of codependency. It, it, you're drawing this environment to yourself and you're wondering why you're not happy. And then the person said, I don't, I don't believe that you're, you're listening to me anymore. Thank you for your time. Um, have a good evening. <laughs> and I was like, ooh. And I said to them, I am listening to you. I'm reiterating to you exactly what you said to me. But then they, they said, thank you for your time. And they hung up. And I thought, Hmm. So I went back and I reread our conversation because I said to the person, they kept asking me questions that I had already answered, right? And I'd answered them very specifically, like Spirit gave the messages very, very clearly. And they were dead on for the questions that were answered. And so they would ask me again. And, and I know that with my twin and I, it happened all the time with us. He would be sending me something and I would be responding or I wouldn't hear anything. So then I would send something else. We were always going over top of each other, right? And then he would say... I'm trying to express myself to you and you're asking me where I live and I said well you didn't answer that you know I just figured I'd go on to the next subject right but that's what we were doing so it, it's kind of like um, when I do a live and there's a delay maybe that's what was going on as well on the chat feed I don't know so I kept saying to the person well if you would go back or if as I stated this was the answer as I stated earlier this was the answer so I said, maybe you, you should uh, go back and, and reread our conversation and maybe you'll be able to see it. And I understood that the person was stressed out, right? Because they're extremely qualified in their field. They're obviously, they've put in many, many years in that. But, and it was going to come to the end. It was literally done. It was done. And very shortly afterwards, they were going to start on their own in another way. And it was going to be really, really good. But when you're in that place, it's kind of like me, right? Spirit says to me, this is a really good move for you to go to Sedona. But it's going to be stressful. It's going to be scary. It's going to be stressful before you do it. But once you get there, everything's going to open up. There's going to be amazing opportunities, and it's going to be wonderful. You're going to be happy. So um, I reread the conversation, and I wondered, maybe I should write the person. You know, Maybe I should write them and say, it's not hummingbird totem. Thank you, though. It's hummingbird hawk moth. Hummingbird hawk moth. You have to look at that. But that's, that's beautiful. Uh, Melissa looked up hummingbird totem. The enjoyment of life, lightness of being, enjoy the sweetness of life, um, lift up negativity when it comes in, express life, love more, be more present. They're known to fly backwards. Thank you. Um, so anyway, but it's hummingbird hawk moth. It's like it's also called the sphinx moth. And I saw my first one when I was in um, Sedona. And I have the larvae on my patio. And they were on my patio. They're the ones that decimated my pansies. It's actually a, a um, the hummingbird hawk moth, hawk moth is the combination of my spiritual twin and I. It's all of our totems together. It's actually really cool. So when I saw one on the hill, that was pretty cool. Um, so I wondered if I should write this person, right, and and say something because maybe I because you know how there's no there's no voice or tone and and you don't you can't understand if somebody's laugh like I would send smiley faces, but I was madly trying to type you know, and, and listen and look at my cards and listen to the radio and answer this person that were fired, was firing questions at me. So it was kind of hard to throw a little laugh out loud and smiles in there. And I was trying to answer. So I just thought, you know what, maybe I'll just let them process, right? Because my twin needs time to process when I give them a bunch of information. I think we should all take time to process because it keeps us from making mistakes. So um, I went out today and I, I, I went and saw my grandson and my daughter yesterday. Remember I said that the, the two totems that came up, the, um, what were the totems that came for us? Puffin and the Red Hawk and how I said that I knew that they would be instrumental in healing my, my relationship with my daughter. I said, I know that that's going to happen. And I spent the whole night, evening and yesterday afternoon with them. It did happen. And I can't tell you, right, I can't tell you because um, no one's supposed to know where she lives. And that's good. They need their privacy. But if you could see the names of the streets that were crossing one another, it was just like, oh, my God. Everywhere I went, I was showing my grandson and we were laughing. It's just amazing. So when Spirit shows you a message, like when we all got this message, the hummingbird hawk moth, it's very important. It's going to have something to do with what's going on in your life. Pay attention. So what else happened? Um, oh. 
So that was a beautiful evening, right? And I came home today and I went and, and I spent all morning going and getting cat food um, for, my, for Willow and so I am for when I, because I'm leaving tomorrow morning to go to Sedona. And my, my grandson told me yesterday when we went out, we went and hung out together, just him and I for a while. And he said that he wanted a husky. And uh, I said, husky shed a lot, babe. And he goes, I want a husky. They're so beautiful. They're like wolves. And I said, you know, so many people want wolves and it's not cool to get a dog that's got wolf in it because most you're not supposed to have them. And a lot of times people get them and raise them as puppies and then they have to rest, you know, send them to shelters. And most of the time they end up being euthanized because they're not supposed to be, um, well, they can't be within the city limits. So he, he, he wanted, he wanted a husky. And I said, well, you know, your dad and mom have three dogs, so you're going to have to wait till they go. And your mom's never going to be able to handle that kind of hair. You'd have to have property. So we were, but that was a message because the wolf is very important to me. The silver wolf, especially a blue eyed silver wolf is very important to me. So, um, I go to get the cat food and what do I walk up to? A husky wolf rescue operation at the pet store. And I've got pictures. I'm going to share it with you. And I got videos and I was just like, oh my God, I was just talking about this yesterday. And I met this man and he and his girlfriend, his fiance at the time rescued these dogs from, they were on death row they were all going to be euthanized because they're mixed husky wolf dogs and even just huskies people buy them especially after that what was that um the show that everybody was into game of thrones and after that everybody wanted a wolf right so everybody goes and buys these dogs and they can't take care of them please don't buy them they're extremely high strung dogs they need a lot of attention they have three coats that shed profusely they need exercise they need to run they need to dig they need to bite and play they're not a poodle right? Please don't get them even though you think they're so beautiful unless you've got the time and energy and property to house them. So as we were, I mean, to me, the, the silver wolf, <laughs> blue eyed wolf, they were all over the place. And I got a, um, I took all the pictures from my grandson. I'm trying to take this off my hand to show you. This is the organization. Ugh. It's what's interesting to me is shadow Shadow Husky Rescue. Shadow Husky Rescue. Okay, dot com if you want to help. And what's interesting is the man, he and his fiance, when they got together, his idea, his dream was to have a rescue operation for these for these beautiful huskies. And uh, when they got married, one of the puppies that he showed me, which is now, uh, she's probably about four now, she was the ring bearer. She carried the rings around her neck down the aisle it's so cute every one of the dogs was in the wedding party and they walked out of the church with all of these dogs it was amazing but it was a lot of personal messages to me because I looked at his bride I said she's beautiful she looks like my twins mother and there was this big man and she married this he married this woman and rescued these blue-eyed huskies and I just thought oh my god so many messages to myself so wolf is a message message to us today wolf totem the husky totem and the hummingbird hawk moth. Hi, Ingrid. Our morning dove is back, cooing all day yesterday in the backyard. Such a soothing sound. You know what? You want to know what's so cool about that? I took a video and then I couldn't share it because it showed where my daughter lived, but I was in the middle of the street and I said, Spirit sure has a sense of humor, right? I'm about to move to Sedona to live in a closet. <laughs> and my daughter just moved into this house and I showed this giant house that she just moved into. And she was showing me all the rooms and all, all the stuff and she took me out in the backyard and, and the front yard has, has a view like this, right? Except for even more green because she lives, oh, I can't tell you where she lives. She lives where I used to live and, and, and it's, it's, it's cooler and it's a, it's a more lush atmosphere. Up here is very, very dry normally. And uh, she goes, look though, mom, look at the guy next door. He raises doves, <laughs> doves. So doves is another totem. And I said, oh, what a beautiful sound. And he, she goes, don't you think it's ugly? And I said, you know what? I said, just listen to the sound. It's so peaceful. And he, I said, what does he do with them? And she says, he lets them out and they fly all around our neighborhood. I said, that's so cool. And she goes, yeah, but they're gonna shit all over our house. And I said, you know what? They're fine, they go back home. So hummingbird hawk moth, dove totem, wolf totem, timber wolf actually, the silver wolf. And what was the other one? Hummingbird hawk moth. Dove, Timberwolf. Hi, Alexa. That's my little sister, you guys, from Sturgeon Bay. Say hi to Alexa. <laughs> when I lived in Sturgeon Bay at the White Lace Inn, Dennis Stotts is the owner, and this is this is their daughter. This is their daughter. 
there's people screaming up behind me. <laughs> husky? Did I say? Oh, I forgot husky. Wolf, husky, hummingbird, hawk moth, and dove. Okay, so those are our items. So those are the totems. Should I just stay here and do the reading and let you guys look at that? I can zoom in on all that for you. Or maybe I should go down because the people up above me are screaming their heads off. I just like being in the shade. And I don't really want to have, um, I don't want to go too far out of the area f for, um, because of the, because of the rattlesnakes. It's beautiful, isn't it? I wish I could get up. Now that Alexa's here, I want her to see. I'm gonna walk over here. I can't believe, why do they have to scream like that? God. And they're speaking Spanish 100 miles an hour. Okay. I just want to show you looking up from the bottom. Okay, I'm getting bit on my feet by I don't know what. Here's the poppies. Here's the poppies. Oh God, there's so many. Okay, you know what I prefer to think? I prefer to think these are gophers, gopher holes rather than rattlesnake holes. Let's say that that's what they are. See, this is what we have all around us. I can sit on that rock. I don't like, I, I have to be careful not to step on the flowers. Yeah, I'll sit right here. Yay, this is where we'll sit. Okay. I know, isn't it incredible? It's freaking incredible. I took pictures on the other side. Look up there, where, remember I hiked that place last time? Here, I'll show you. There's blue, the blue and the purple are like sage, wild, not wild sage, what's it called? Um, lupin, wild lupin. And down there, where you see the, the purple, you can't see it as much, I'm too far away. And then it's got this dried purple in it. You know, like fields and fields of that. There's so many different types, like here. Like there, right? It's so beautiful. <laughs> okay, I have to start the reading. Otherwise, this is gonna take forever. Okay, I'm gonna sit right here. Move over. I gotta move these guys over so I don't crunch them. <laughs> okay, we're sitting right here. What a cool, what a cool view. All right, you guys. This is your view. Wow. So the decks that we're using today, look at this, you guys, this is so cool. I've, I've got this perfect backdrop, right? This rock, I'm sitting on this, it's actually literally a chair. Can you see it? It's like a living room chair. I've got the bottom and I've got the head for the back, right? And then I've got all this around me. Okay. What could be more beautiful? I am the queen of wands, right? And this is my kingdom. Look at this. Look at this. Who would want something more beautiful than this? See, this is when money isn't everything. And that person that was so worried about their job, I'm like, go outside. I said, you need to go outside. I literally said that to the person. I go, you need to go outside and relax. You need to go outside and breathe and get yourself calm because this is the best antidepressant anyone can ever take. Ever, ever. If I'm sad and I come out into this, I mean, come on, look at that. How can you be sad? Look at the butterflies all going around us, you guys. Okay. Oh, did you catch that? Did you catch that one that went, there's another. They're gonna keep going by the screen. So freaking cool. I know, I'm so happy that you guys are here. I wanna kind of sit sideways and I can't because I'm falling off the rock. I want to sit this way so you can get that view because that's just freaking supreme. Oh my God. Okay, so the two decks I was told to use today are, um, they're odd, I thought, but they have very specific messages, you know? So there's a reason for that, I suppose. They're not, um, so if the, if the reading today, if a reading doesn't, um, resonate with you just just let it go it might be very very specific it might be i mean i believe that we always have something that we can learn 
right? There's always something for all of us. But if you personally feel that, oh, that doesn't resonate for me, then don't try and make it fit. Don't, don't listen to something and go, oh my God, that's going to happen, <laughs> right? Don't worry about it. Okay. So, all right. The deck that we're going to be using, and, and okay, the items that you're going to choose from, this is, this is going to be fun, are the California poppies, the purple dried status. This is called status. People put that in wedding bouquets. So the purple dried status and, oh look, we've got them all right here. And then the bluebell, not, these are like bluebells, but they're wild. They're actually, are they columbine? They might be columbine. Whatever they are, the purple ones. Can you see them up close? So there's one item. The poppies are the other item. The dried blue status are the other item. And then the white baby's breath. It's not really baby's breath, but it's white. Okay, so those are the items that you get to choose from. And the decks that you're going to work with today, which, feel, which is better, that way or that way? I don't know which way to sit so you guys can get a cooler view. All right, the deck is Ma uh, the Magdalene Oracle and actually the Golden Tarot. So we'll see what comes. Here comes a butterfly. Boop, going by. So for those who chose the golden poppies, okay, hold on, let me think. California poppies. Um, oh my God, look at you guys with the wind blowing on them. <laughs> it's so pretty, they're so happy. I choose them because they're freaking happy. I have to shuffle somehow. How can I shuffle? Correct for neutrality on all levels. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. My landlord yelled at me. Well, he, he's like, you, you can't go out there on the hills and, and do a reading it's too hot and then he's like and there's too much traffic and you're gonna get stuck and blah 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 and I'm like no I'm not I'm going on the hill I told them I was going there goes a butterfly it was a tiger stripe butterfly so butterfly could be a totem too you guys transformation moving okay here we go for those who chose the California poppies Oh, wow. This one. Ah, I saw this one this morning. Yay. This is, <laughs> yay. <laughs> right on. This is, look at, and look at the field, you guys. Look, how appropriate. Except for these are lilies. Are, these, are, these are either lilies or they're, um, what's the other one? That comes up, lotus, but I think these are lilies. So the deal with lilies is what? They come through the mud. They start out in the mud right? They have to struggle their way through to the surface of the water and they reach for the light. And here you see, these are the lily pads, green for love, healing, growth, money, abundance, yellow for the divine masculine, forward movement, again, growth, happiness, sunshine, right? And they've all blossomed on the top of this muddy water. So you've gone through something difficult, right? Something's been challenging, but, but you're reaching for the light. We're constantly reaching for the light and there's a healing that's taking place. And what's so amazing about this, it's just as amazing as these beautiful flowers that surround us. This is showing you that a beautiful relationship will soon develop. And this is a relationship that's going to last for years. This is not a fly. This is not a, what do they call it? Um, hold on. People are listening to me. They want to know what I'm doing. It's kind of cute. It's a grandpa. Can you see with his kids, his grandkids? Actually, it's not a grandpa. It's a dad. Sorry. <laughs> He's just an older looking dad with little kids. Maybe it is a grandpa. I'm a young looking grandma. Maybe it is his, maybe it is his grandkids. Anyway, it's not, um, cause we've been getting this about, I've been getting this a lot that there's a relationship coming in, right? And they're calling him the King of Wands or the King of Fire. And, or else the Knight of Cups. And they say, oh, well, that's a hit it and quit it, right? That's, that's why somebody wants to come in and, and tap that ass and, and run out the other way. That's not what this is. This, this one's coming to stay. This is love that, that's coming for a long time. We just got another couple totems. Um, I love being out here. The, the, the vultures are flying all around too, which is death transformation and rebirth. So there goes the butterfly. <laughs> so this love relationship you are supposed to savor it. Spirit says, 
appreciate it like like this like you're appreciating this right this is the kind of this is what this love is going to be it's going to be creative it's going to be happy it's 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 because this is the color of your sacral chakra the seat of sexual energy and creativity there's going to be great sex in this relationship bomb sex there's a major attraction there's total love you need to savor this relationship because it's it's one that you have wanted it's one that you deserve and it's coming to stay and in this relationship it is going to be filled as i said with the color of the sacral chakra so it's filled with creative blessings so there's all kinds of things that you're going to discover together you're going to do together um, blessings are going to come from it and the reason it's coming is why the reason is coming because you are love and love is a magnet and you can't help but draw to you what you are so this is what the, the blessing is where's the card this is a blessing that maybe you've gone through. I have gone through a really difficult time. Is it better this way? Oops. There, it's probably better that way where you can see it. <laughs> and now you're being rewarded with something amazing. You're something amazing. And so if you are somebody that's already in a relationship and you're like, okay, well, I, I'm with somebody. Then it talks about your love deepening. It talks about just like this flower comes from the depths, right? It comes from way down deep and it's, and it's, 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 it's basically, you think about the root system. Have you ever tried to pull one of these out of the water? I have. I had ponds in Canada, and I tried to do it when I was in Sturgeon Bay too. I tried to pull it out by the roots, and you can't. They're so freaking strong, and that's the kind of love this is. It's a strong one. It's got roots, and so it's telling you that you are going to experience a renewal. That's why, that's why, that's why the, the vulture went by right at that moment, because you're going to experience a renewal in your relationship. Just like this, just like these flowers. These poppies come back every year. So this year is a special year because we don't have these poppies like this every year. It's normally been very, very dry, but we got so much emotion, right? So much water was spilled. And you think about that. There may have been extremely emotional times. And because of that, this is the result. Yes, it was difficult. Tears were spilled, but there was a, there was a lot learned. So it's about being receptive to one another and expressing your insecurities with one another and really getting to know one another and even if you've been in a relationship I wish I could see you guys I can't see you because of the Sun <laughs> I can't see you at all I'll have to watch this later to see you but it's talking about you know what sometimes that's what you gotta do sometimes you gotta cry right you've got to share your insecurities and and your fears and your worries with one another or how how can you be a best friend to somebody right so that's what's going on. That's the first message. And I think that's freaking awesome because I've been waiting for that. And I'm telling you that those fake rocks at the top there, I keep forgetting I can turn this around. I keep forgetting I can turn this around. That, that rock that I climbed to that I was so excited about that looked like the watchtower, it bothers me when I look at that and realize that that's fake. Right? So something from a distance can look really good. And then when you get to really know it, right? It's not all that it's cracked up to be. So there may have been a breakdown. And now it's coming back together, a renewal, after tears have been spilled. That's my message, that's what I get. That's awesome. All right, let's see. All right, so now we're gonna pick the, what did I say, these ones. We'll go with the purple status, okay? For those who chose the purple status, we'll go back to, whoops. Hold on. My cards are like falling down the hill. <laughs> I'm, and I squashed some flowers. I did. I feel really bad because I don't like squashing flowers. I'll show you what I did. I squashed that one plant. I feel bad. Sorry, guys. They are actually supposed to be a weed, but I don't like killing anything. So that's pretty cool to get that message first. So let me shuffle while I put you guys, put you guys down again. I'm sorry. I'm zooming all over the place crazy person there we go all right correct for neutrality on all levels for those who chose the purple status correct for neutrality on all levels for those who chose the purple status oh there's another flower up here I just saw the yellow Ooh. we'll have to go over there in a minute when I finish the cards it's tall and yellow it's pretty okay for those who chose the purple status Saint Sinner. Okay, I think I know what this one is. Hold on. 
Let me put these away. Hold on. I want to try and stop. Hold on. <laughs> oh. Okay. I want to try and stop my cards and my stuff from flying down the hill like I always do. All right. So let's take a look at this one. First of all, I see blue, which is the which either could be sadness or depression or tears. I say tears because look at the size of those drops, right? It's got a very somber look on her face, but her her um her third eyes lit up pretty good, right? Look at those eyelashes. I kill for eyelashes like that, but look at her eyes are like are like the ocean. They're very turbulent. So this is talking about okay, Saint Sinner. So this is talking about a misunderstanding. This is talking about assuming something incorrectly. So, remember I told you I thought what I was watching, or when I, when I did my twins, I mean, when I did the reading with that fellow and I said I thought it was, a, what I was something I was watching of my twin soul's life? But remember I told you the other day with the dreams? I, I, that's what I always thought, that it was him. And it wasn't his life that I was watching. It was my daughter's life or my client's life. I was dreaming. I, I dreamed all kinds of things with my grandson the other night. So it's what I thought. It's not accurate. It's what I thought, right? It was, I was incorrect. That's why I told you guys, I, I, I have to, you have to be careful with dreams because if it's not unfolding in front of you and you can't verify it, it's not the truth. So this is the saint sinner. It doesn't, so you may be assuming something incorrectly. We are in Mercury retrograde right now. We got to be really careful. So the assumptions that you're making about a person or a, an event, something in your life could totally be completely wrong. It could be something completely different than you understand. You know, you can look at something and it can look one way and it can actually turn out to be something 100% in a different direction. There's more going on than meets the eye. And Spirit's been telling us this for how long have we been getting this? Forever. We have been getting the same message. Remember, what, what did I get? And I said it the other day is there's more going on than meets the eye. It's not that bad, right? And that's what's going on right now. So we're being advised to keep an open mind and an open heart. It's not the way it appears. And so sometimes we'll look at a situation and we'll make a judgment about it. Gosh, I want to turn this around and talk to you guys. We'll make, it, we'll make a judgment about something because it looks so, it's so obvious to us, right? That that's what it's, it's got to be. I can't see you any way I turn you. <laughs> um... So I'll turn you this way because I can see a little bit. So we'll look at a situation and we'll read it. Now think about this. This one has their third eye lit up, right? She's like me. I'm very intuitive. I'm very telepathic. I'm very, um, I have prophetic dreams. But it doesn't mean that, I, that I'm 100% correct in something that I see. Maybe I'm not seeing the full, the full story. So we have to be really, really careful. We could be calling something bad and it's not. We could be calling something good and it's not. Remember when I spoke about the the watchtower up there, right? When you look at it, gosh, I need to get there. When you look at it from this perspective, where is it? Oh God, there it is. Okay, there it is. And you think, wow, that's majestic, right? And then you see it with all the flowers around it and you're thinking that's incredible. And then you get up there and it's not even a real, t it's, it's plastic. It's, it's like made out of, I don't know what, it's man-made materials and it houses radioactive frequencies. So it's not at all what it seems. So like I said, something can look really beautiful and very innocent and be very, very dangerous. And something can look really, really bad and not be at all. So oftentimes when we look at things, we, when we make judgments about um, ourselves or others, well, that's exactly what we're doing actually. If we make a judgment about anybody, we're making a judgment about ourselves. That's that's just what it is. We're, we can't judge anyone. We don't know what's going on. So this is this is telling you right now. If you think that you understand what's going on in a situation, you probably don't. And you're making assumptions about something that could be completely wrong. So you need to let go of the "I'm right, you're wrong" attitude, which is oh, and I, and that's what I was. Um, I don't know if I ended up finishing saying what I was saying, but that person that wrote to me, I mean the person that I read for yesterday, they wrote me back today a beautiful beautiful email and the person said hi Sherry um, I want to thank you for the reading that you did for me on Friday I went back and I reread it and I realized that that I was uh, and, and she told me I was a little bit upset because 
I didn't think that you were hearing me at the end. And I realized that I was hearing through my fear and I need to stop that. And I reread our conversation and I realized that you were actually tapped in to a lot of the underlying issues. And so I'm going to, there's a person that I know that used to be in the medical field as well as like the same as me and she's become a life coach. So I'm going to have her work with me and help me. Um, and I just wanted to say, I really appreciate the reading. And if you, if, if it's okay, like she says, I don't want to keep coming back on keen cause it's expensive, you know? And a lot of times people, what I don't like about that, and this is the truth, people call psychics because they're fearful or they're, you know, they want to know, no, no. But a lot of times they get hooked, right? And they keep calling again and again and again, like every day. I've got people that call me every single day and not, what's going to change in a day? You know, it's like you shouldn't listen to tarot card readers or um, no, where they do predictions. You shouldn't listen to them every day because first of all, they're not going to be for everybody. And you read for so many different people that they change constantly. You throw yourself into a panic and also nothing's going to change in one day. I mean, sometimes things can, things can change overnight, but if you're calling every single day, I mean, you've got to, and I would say to the people that would call me, don't call for a week, like call back later. I mean, I'm not, it's not about just the money for me. This is, I'm a spiritual teacher and I'm telling you, you got to give spirit a little bit of time. You know, you put your rockets of desire out there. They know what you need. They know what you want. They've told you do this, this, and this right now, and then relax, go for a hike, go do something, but don't, don't call every single day. I mean, I appreciate you calling. Of course it pays my bills, but you really shouldn't. It's not good for you. And, and the person said that they said, you know, I really need to not call so much because it's expensive. And, uh, but, but when I do want to touch back base, I, I hope that it's okay if I call you back. And I thought how beautiful, because I wanted to write to that person, right? And explain. So I wrote her back this big, I don't even know if it's a woman. I think it might be a man. It's bear two, two, two. And I said, I, PS, I love the name that you call yourself because they're amazing. The numbers are amazing. Two, two, two says everything is happening exactly as it is meant to happen with divine blessings for everyone involved. Let go and have faith. And bear is mother bear, right? Comfort, endurance, solitude, relaxing. I mean, you think about what a bear does. They go into hibernation, which is what spirit wants them to do. Go into nature and, and relax, right? I said, I love that. There's amazing messages in that. And then I wrote this big, long email back and I said, I really appreciate. Thank you for calling me. Thank you for calling me and giving me the opportunity to talk to you because I felt that I did a reading the other day and they showed us the queen of swords, the queen of air. And they talked about a person who was like a lawyer, who was very analytical, logical, was very truthful, but sometimes came across without showing much emotion. And I said, I, I don't give fluffy readings. I don't do, I don't give you what you need to hear. I mean, what you want to hear. I give you what spirit wants you to hear, what you need to hear. And so I'm used a lot of times to give the tough messages, but I was given that message before you called me. And it was a message for me. I said, so this is a lesson for me that I needed to understand. I said, I was juggling. I was trying desperately to do your reading and, t and type and, and listen and shuffle and watch the animal messengers and, and, and see what you were saying that I could have been more compassionate. I, I realized that tone doesn't come across. I, I know I spoke about some of this before, but, um, but she gave me the opportunity, or he gave me the opportunity um, to remedy the situation, which spirit did. And I said, I, I appreciate that. But so this is another message about how when we get our messages, they give it a couple days and it'll show up, right? So there's a love that's going to come into our lives. Whoever picked the California poppies, I did. So that's a great message for me. But in the meantime, until it does, what do we do? We go out into nature, we enjoy ourselves, we go hiking, we have some fun, and we give spirit five minutes to bring things together, right? We gotta, we've gotta allow it to happen. We just have to rest in the knowledge that it's happening and, it, and, and trust it. I gotta read what your messages say. Oh, a guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how many cards. I didn't even say I was going to do cards, but you guys are so used to me doing that. I suppose I will. So that the Saint Sinner card is basically telling you, don't assume that you know the whole story, right? Don't make any judgments about people because if you're making a judgment about someone, then you should expect people to make judgments about you. And it's no fun when people judge us, is it? It's not fun. So in this particular situation, it's basically hold your peace and, and, and give it a little time to play out so that you understand the truth of what's going on. All right, we're going to go to the next. 
Um, the next is going to be the white flowers. These ones, they're like ba baby's breath. Like bridal veil. They look like bridal veil, actually. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the white flowers, it's so hard to sh find a surface. Ascension. There's our doves. There's our dove. See? Doves were brought up, and my daughter had the dove at her house. So this is what's going on. We're, we're dealing with ascension right now, and a lot of us are dealing with this. A lot of us are having ascension symptoms right now. I'm laughing. Look at my feet. Can you see the pollen? I know. Look at my feet. Oh, there's dirt. But look at the pollen. I think that's so funny. Oh, the sun's going behind a cloud. Thank God. In a second, I'll be able to see. Okay, so the ascension process. Right now, with the ascension process, we're dealing with... Um, here, let's do it like that. That's pretty. We're dealing with headaches. We're dealing with body aches. We're dealing with really strange dreams. We are, um, but we're ascending. We're on the path to ascension. And I, somebody said something yesterday or the other day that I heard that I thought was really cool. They said, you know, the, the life of a spiritual person, once we become awakened, we, we learn something, right? And then it's like, we have to break it down and unlearn it because we're going to move up to the next level. And it's really like that because we get to the place where we think we've got something figured out and then spirit says, think again. <laughs> think again because now you're going up another level and we're shifting because it's nothing stays static. I wanted to shift you guys over here because it's prettier when the sun comes behind the clouds when I move it around. So with the ascension process here, with this card, forever, whoever chose the white flowers... We're telling you that the ascension process is long. It's our whole life. It's as soon as we start to awaken. Don't think we're going to figure it out. It's our entire life. It's going to continue until we're ready to go back to spirit. It's, and it's slow, right? We're always in an altered state. We're always going higher. We're always learning more. And, and a lot of times, the things that we learn, we, we can't really explain to other people. The ones, especially ones who are not awakened, right? They don't understand what the hell we're talking about. And sometimes we can't even explain it to ourselves. And we have to be okay with that. And a lot of times there's people, like I have people that call me on my psychic hotline and they get really frustrated because they don't, you know, when am I going to learn more? When are my gifts going to open? When, 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 when? And I did that too. I wanted to go fast too. And there's no way to go fast because we're never going to be finished. And when we learn the things that we learn, we learn it when we're ready. And a lot of the times, like for me, I wanted to, I wanted to know... I wanted to know um, when would I see spirit? When would I hear spirit? Because I had friends that did that, right? And I thought it wasn't fair that I didn't get to. <laughs> I wanted to. And I, and I felt like I've been studying and working for such a long time. I should be able to have those experiences. Why, haven't I not, why have I not reached that state yet? And I have a client that calls and she's the most, I've spoken about her before. Her name is Catherine. And she's a black lady. And she's the sweetest woman. She's the most loving, loving energy. And I have another client, too. I haven't heard from her in a really long time, actually. I thought about her. Sweet lady. And uh, they're very down on themselves all the time. They, they feel like they haven't figured it out. And they haven't, you know, when am I going to learn this? And I thought maybe I should do tarot. And am I supposed to do something else? And I said, Catherine, and to the other woman, too, I said, you are the most, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing now. You're, you are so loving and generous and giving. That is your gift. That is your work. Your work is doing what you're doing right now. So a lot of times we don't realize that we're already, on, we're doing what we're meant to do. And then when you're supposed to, not everyone's supposed to be a teacher. Not like this kind of a teacher. We're always teachers. We're always teaching everybody all the time. She teaches people how to be compassionate and loving and, and, and put other people in a state of bliss. She, she's got that energy, right? And she always ends up crying when I talk to her because she gets so touched. And I said, you know, you're an empath. You're so empathic and you're so interested in what other people feel. And you're always so giving of yourself. That is your job. You should, I said, you might consider working, going to like a, a homeless shelter and, and volunteering if you want to give of your time. Or you might consider going, you know, to an animal shelter. If you're somebody that's good with animals, right? Like that man that I met this morning. 
I didn't finish talking about the man who rescued the Huskies. They got married in the church with all the Huskies, right? And he says, when I met my wife, I told her I was really interested in this and this is really what I wanted to do. It was a dream of mine. And when they got married, that's what they did. They opened up this Husky rescue organization. That's their gift, right? He's not, he, he's not doing uh, like spiritual teaching. That's his gift. He's saving those beautiful animals from, from extinction. They're, they literally were slaughtering them. So this is telling you, we're always in the process of learning. We're always in the process. My twin soul said to me, I'm a work in progress. We're always a work in progress and we should always stay a work in progress. Always. Because, we're, because that means that we're constantly reaching. That means that we're constantly learning. And that we're open. And that we're understanding that the path to ascension is never done. So we just have to accept that. Stop trying to reach it and be present in this moment because we're here. This is where we are. Oh God, look where we are. Look where we are. Now I understand why these people were screaming. They weren't screaming like me. They were just kind of yelling. But look, I feel like screaming. Look at the hills. <laughs> look at this. Gotta be kidding me. This is just magic. Pure magic. So be in the present moment. Enjoy where you are. Enjoy your gifts. Sorry, I know I'm zoomed in too much. But look at this. <sighs> If you know that this is valuable, that this is more valuable than the mall, if you know that this is more valuable than expensive clothes and a diamond ring, if you understand that this is more healthy for you than going into a gym, it's healthier to come out here and climb these hills and breathe this air and be amongst these flowers, you are ascending. You're doing what you're meant to do. Okay. Hi all. <laughs> I thought I would check in and see what messages you have. No, oh, I now you have to look up my nose. I don't know how to do this where you're not looking at my nose. <laughs> there, I'm behind a rock. Okay. Okay, so Ingrid, I don't come for a mini message, but I do love them. I get so many messages from all of the videos. So blessed. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna go to, let me swap you, pop you back around and sit my ass back down. And we're gonna go to, <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. I'm leaving for Sedona tomorrow and I was so scared. What if I don't get out today? And when I get back, the poppies are all gone because they're, they're fully bloomed, right? They're bloomed and then, and then this is what happens. Once they bloom, that, that's one that's already lost its petals, right? So pretty soon, the petals are gonna be gone. There's only gonna be a few days where this is gonna be here. So they may be gone when I get back. And I was like, oh please, I have to get out and see this before they go. Okay, so now we're gonna go to, so we did the purple status. We did, no, we did the poppies. We did the, what did we do? We did love, we did ascension. Okay, I love it when you guys are live because I can't remember what I said. Can you tell me? Hi, Sandy. Oh, I'm glad you're there. Look, look, Sandy. <laughs> look. Isn't this incredible? <laughs> They're all following the sun. Do you notice this, you guys? That's something that's actually interesting. They're following the sun. Their heads are turning and they're starting to look up the hill. They were facing this way before. And see how they're turning sideways? All of them, they're like a wave. They're all turning sideways. And look, they're starting to close. So they all close up when the sun goes and they follow the sun. So we got here just in time to see the experience. Sandy, could you be my secretary? I've got some people that are wanting a reading. Spirit says I'm doing seven. And I can't, oh, I need to ask somebody. Somebody tell me, we did the poppies first. We did, did we do purple or white? Cause didn't I just say the baby's breath, the white, the white baby's breath? Have I done three cards or have I only done two? Oh, you already have them, Gina? Thank you, Gina. Okay, I didn't know that you did. Okay, cool. Um, so, question. Bluebells to come. I haven't done the bluebells yet. <laughs> oh, my God. Tell me how many I've done, and then I'll do the bluebells. These are the bluebells, right? This is what we're doing now. So, how many cards have I done, you guys, so far? Can you tell me? I can't even freaking remember. I've done three? Oh, my God. I get so into it, I forget. Okay. 
those who chose the bluebells, correct for neutrality on all levels. I did. I chose the bluebells <laughs> because they're kind of like forget-me-nots. And we all know I love forget-me-nots. There are forget-me-nots on the other side, like my forget-me-not ring. Okay, for those who chose... There's actually even more over here, you guys. More color flowers. I'm just noticing. I wish I'd shown you. I'll show you. Hopefully, they'll be awake. Okay. For those who chose the bluebells, I love that this deck is cooperating with me. It's actually shuffling and separating where it's supposed to. Thank God. Okay. Little children. Hmm. Little children. There's a lot of passion here. It looks again like we're on the water right? Oh, it's dark. Sorry. Here, let's put us here. <laughs> that works better for me. So little children, kindergarten is what I'm hearing. Little children. Well, we're little children. We're God's children. All of us are children. So what do we think of when we think of little children? You know what this looks like to me? This looks again, like the countryside. If these were red, it kind of looks like that, right? So it's like artwork. It's like somebody like, like a child could paint that. A child could paint that and it's beautiful. It's like a Monet painting. I don't like Monet paintings because I like detail, but you could give a child a paintbrush and they could do that. And that's beautiful, the colors. So, it, so, the, so it's talking about enthusiasm. It's talking about passion. It's talking about love, I would say, right? Look at the colors. There's the color of the, of the same flowers in there. So if we're like, if we're being childlike, we're being innocent. We're, we're fun loving, right? We don't have preconceived notions of what people should be or how things should be. Oh, I'm seeing an amazing totem bird and I don't know what it is. It's bright orange. Wow. I hope it comes up closer. So this is basically what it is. This is like, just be natural. Have fun. Play in the field like this, right? Look at me holding up my cards with my toe. So spirit says, we want you to let go of your hangups. <laughs> we want you to just let it all hang out. We want you to have fun. Oh, there, I can see. I couldn't see all this time. Oh my God, we'll only be able to see for a few minutes. Spirit says we wanna have fun. We wanna play, we wanna be childlike, we wanna be innocent. We wanna, um, like the other card that we got. Oh, that was the other card that we got, right? That, that something that we assumed may not be what it is, right? Kids don't assume anything, they just have fun. They just go out and have fun. Oh my gosh, look how dark it got, you guys. Because the sun's behind Mr. Cloud. <laughs> so this is the message. The message is telling us to be childlike and innocent and playful and express your feelings the way you want to run and play and, and, and act like a little kid, even if you are in your fifties, right? Your spirit says it would benefit you very much right now. If you would adopt that attitude. Oh, look behind me. Look behind me. Oh, look. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. That is so freaking cool. Yay. Oh my God. <laughs> So this is the attitude that we're supposed to have, right? Whatever way you want to do it. If you want to hike, if you want to play, if you want to paint. I mean, that picture, which fell down the hill <laughs> with my water bottle, this picture <laughs> looks like a child painted it. So they want you to play. They want you to paint. They want you to have some fun. Apparently, whoever chose this, this, these bluebells is a little uptight right now. And spirit wants you to relax. They want you to look at things like a little kid. They want you to play. They don't want you to judge yourself. They don't want you to, um, I'm hearing the word hang up. I'm hearing the word hang up. What's your hang up? You need to lighten up. <laughs> I'm on top of my game. <laughs> I'm on top of a rock that spirit gave me as a perfect chair. Look, look, I could turn this around. Look at my chair. Isn't that a throne for a queen? If that is not the queen of wands throne, I have never seen one. <laughs> so that's what we're supposed to well, hear. Think about that. What were we talking about a minute ago? What was I saying about the Huskies at the beginning, how people watched the Game of Thrones and then they ended up all adopting Huskies or getting Huskies and then not taking care of them, right? I can be a queen of thrones, but I can sit outside in a field and not ruin any puppy's life, right? <laughs> this is about having fun and joyfulness. Be a little child. Spirit wants us to be a little child. They want us to play. They want us to adopt a, a fun-loving attitude. They want us to go hiking. Look at, I'm watching, it's so nice. I, I'll see, see if I can zoom in. I love to see this because you don't see this very often around here. 
There are all kinds of grandpas and grandmas and moms and dads with their kids walking in these fields because it's such a special time. I don't know if you can see them. It's amazing. It makes me really, really happy because a lot of people are so busy, you know, and we talked about parents and children and how the kids really need us to spend time with them. And not only that, but they need to understand that this is important. They need to under they need to have this kind of a childhood and we need to have this kind of an adult childhood. We need this childhood now as adults. We're not ever supposed to grow up. We're always supposed to be kids. Always. We're always supposed to be exuberant and excited and happy and it lifts our energy and it lifts the energy of everybody around us. So if you have a child, take them out here, hiking around the hills and, sh and playing here. And also take your inner child because spirit says there's a hang up. Spirit says right now there seems to be an issue with not having fun, with looking at things in a judgmental way, with judging yourself, blocking your emotions, and not being enthusiastic. And Spirit says you need enthusiasm. You need a, what is it? You need a shot in the arm. And this is your nature shot in the arm. Look at that giant sage bush right there. That's California white sage right there. Oh, God. I freaking love it here. Can't stand it. Let's see. I wonder if I sit up here. Oh, I could be queen of the castle up here. I will. I'll bring the cards up here and I'll be the queen of the castle. Oh my gosh, I dropped something. That's dangerous. Look, I dropped my St. Christopher medal. That's my safe traveler's medal. What does that mean? Ooh. Hmm. I'll have to ask Spirit what that means. Okay. I think... Was that it? Was that our... Was that our... Um, I've got to make sure this, I don't lose this. Was that our full reading? <laughs> it's a fabulous throne. <laughs> you can see things through the eyes of a child. I see through, I see like that every single day. <laughs> I'm an, I am, I can't, I can't get over this. I can't get over this. Now that the, now that the sun has gone away from, from me, I can see myself all the way up this hill. It was so bright for me. I know you guys could probably see it, but on my sunglasses, it was really difficult. They're all shutting their eyes. All of them. They're all going to sleep. That's so bizarre. The sun is just behind the clouds for a little bit, and they're going to sleep. So there's a message. That's a really big message. The sun is the divine masculine, right? The sun is forward movement. The sun is growth and happiness and positive energy. And as soon as the sun disappears, everyone goes to sleep. We go to sleep spiritually too. We can't let our sun disappear. We have to stay bright and happy and sunny in order to keep awake. We're gonna, because we go off our path. If we don't stay awake by staying happy and optimistic and looking at on the, on the sunny side of things, our third eye is gonna go to sleep and we're gonna start seeing things in a negative light. We're gonna start losing our enthusiasm, right? We can't do that. Because look, the sun isn't really gone away. It's right there. It just went behind a cloud for a few minutes. But it fooled everybody into thinking it had gone away. And all of the flowers are closing up. They think it's over. But it's not over. Not as soon as the sun comes back out. Okay. I think that we... I've lost your comments. Oh, there they are. Okay. Um, I don't know if I want to stay here. I just heard, yes, I am staying here. So let me start the readings. Um, I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna stand so that we can see a lot. I'm trying to place the decks in a place where you guys can see the most and where I can see the most. Stay. I kind of would like to sit up on top of my throne. I need lip gloss and I can't find it. So who's first? Show me who's first. I'm gonna turn you around. Tracy? Okay. Tracy, correct for neutrality on all levels. Correct for neutrality on all levels. I've got two decks, as I said. I've got the um, Magdalene Oracle, and I've got the, what is the other one called? The Tarot, the Golden Tarot. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the Golden Tarot, and I'll pull one card 
come back, son. I think I'll just stay on my throne right where I'm at. And when the sun comes back, they'll wake up again. They'll understand that it's not over. There we go. Because I don't know where else to go. Okay, so for Tracy, correct for neutrality on all levels. For Tracy, as soon as I said your name, Tracy, a white butterfly went by, that's a message for you. There's a special, there's a specific meaning for white butterflies. So look up butterfly totem, look up white butterfly totem. That's for you specifically, a message for you. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For Tracy, correct for neutrality on all levels. For Tracy, correct for neutrality on all levels. For Tracy. What is the message for Tracy? One more I heard. Correct for neutrality on all levels for Tracy. Whoa, okay, there's like, there's a clash. There's like a little, um, I don't know if it's clash of head and heart or if it's, um, cause it looked like things were going smoothly and then all of a sudden there was a, a block. So that might be something that you need to pay attention to. I'm gonna do it like this. That's your card. Woo! Okay, so Queen of Swords in reverse. Three of Swords in reverse. That's really good. That's really good, Tracy, and you know that too. <laughs> Three of Swords is sadness, right? Someone hurt you, broke your heart. Someone stabbed you in the heart, or you felt stabbed in the heart. You were sad, and now it's in reverse. You see this one. She's holding a book in her hand, right? What is this, a book of knowledge, understanding, information? So maybe, I think what I'm reading is, then there's turbulence all around, right? Could be a third party situation, which means interference from other people. But like the message that we got earlier, don't assume something. Things could be um, completely different than what you were imagining. And that is the message that I'm getting. And I'm getting that you're, there's an understanding, right? The knowledge, because upside down, it's reversed. So here, I'm holding some information in my hand and I'm hurt I, and I've elevated myself but there's storms all around me. So it might be somebody felt like they were, they were justified or someone else had done something wrong. They, they were elevated above, looking down, and it was very dark around and they felt wounded to the heart. But in reverse, that's, that's, you've, the knowledge has been shown that it wasn't what you assumed or wasn't what you thought you understood. And there's, that, that's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting when I look at this. I don't read the cards the way other people read tarot because I don't really know tarot very well but I do feel that she has a red she's got a red robe right it's almost like she's a judge judging feel and, and arms crossed which is stubbornness or not allowing you close I'm, I'm keeping you away from me but this book is green which is love and healing and these gargoyles are angry you're elevated up above these are angry, there's storms all around, and there's pain. But in the reverse, there's been understanding, and there's been love, and there's been healing. And you're not elevated any longer. It also could be something different, however. Sometimes it could mean that you're not allowing the past to go. You need to release it, because you should drop this, right? That book should drop. What you're holding on to, your arms should drop, which means your, your heart should be exposed and opened. So let go of the past so that everything can, can disappear. Let go of all of this so that the swords can drop out of your heart. We know about this, Tracy. We know that the past needs to go. It needs to no longer be dwelled on. This book, this book of the list of all the wrongs done or all of the notes taken or all of the things uh, uh, that you're holding on to, keeping record of, you need to drop that. And when you drop that, you're, when you drop your hands over, away from your heart, your heart is open and that book drops away and the swords drop out. So that's what needs to happen. Okay, who's next? Correct for neutrality. Who's next, please? Tracy... Melissa, okay, sorry, I couldn't see it. The sun was in my eyes. Correct for neutrality. Actually, the sun isn't in my eyes. It's like the sun's on the camera and I can't see. Correct for neutrality on all levels for Melissa. Correct for neutrality. Ha ha, look at them, see? <laughs> They're starting to wake up and stand up to the sun. I love that. Ooh, how about that? I like that message. 
Somebody is sta- starting to wake up and stand up to the sun. That's interesting. So somebody, that's interesting. Somebody is standing up to the sun of somebody. As they awaken, they're understanding something and they're standing up. I like that. I like that a lot. That's a freaking awesome message. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For Melissa, God, somebody please give me my lip gloss. Just a second. My lips are literally cracking. (laughs) I thought I put them in here. Just a second. Yay! There it is. Hold on. Oh, God. You know, it's better to not wear lipstick at all. Ever. Because then you don't get the freaking crack dry feeling. Ugh. It's the worst feeling. (gasps) Hold on. Before I give you your card, i got to show you what I'm looking at. Look up over the hill. Can you see it? Can you see the moon? Look. She's rising right over the hill there. So pretty. The man in the moon. Okay. Melissa. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Oh my God. I hope I have enough battery to do all of this. I may lose you guys. Correct for neutrality. I'm in an actually very precarious spot and I'm trying to behave with my cards, like really be, be nice to my cards. And uh, it's very difficult for me to shuffle and not lose everything. So I'm sorry I'm taking a while. Correct for neutrality. Isn't the moon beautiful? It's just a shadow, but it's beautiful. Correct for neutrality on all levels. The moon is just a shadow. The moon is just a shadow. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Correct for neutrality on all levels. It's just a shadow, but it's beautiful. What is that telling me? Melissa. Two of coins. Okay, so two of pentacles in reverse. So, okay, let's read it together, first of all. So he's juggling. He's got two coins. He's very intent. He's really intent on that one, though, one in particular. So, and there's a ship over here being tossed at sea. Check it out. There's a person in it trying to hold on to that sail. And then there's a little boat that's like a, like a, a lifeboat that's over here. And this person's either a, obl- look at the waves. He's completely oblivious to what's going on over here. He's so consumed with this coin. And it looks to me like a gear, you know, like a gear that was going around and around. So it's like overanalyzing. But I'm so focused on this that I have no idea what's going on. There's a whole world out there. there. I'm out in this desert, not paying attention to all of this being tossed at sea. I'm desperately trying to hold on to my sail here. My God. And there's a lifeboat out there. I'm trying to get there. I need your help. What the fuck are you doing? I'm juggling. I'm so consumed with my money that I have no idea what's going on with my family or with my friends. I'm completely... I'm so focused on that. I'm out in a dry desert on the top of this mountain. I'm not dressed very appropriately for being in the desert. I'm wearing a royal cape, red. Hierarchy. I don't even think you've got shoes on. You've got stockings, stocking feet. You're ill-equipped to be where you are. That's not the best place for you. This is not the place that you should be, but there's a boat you could get on. You could get on that dinghy and go on that boat, but you're so focused on that coin. You want that coin. Melissa, this sounds so odd to me for you, but I'm literally, I mean, this is what I'm reading when I look at, am I seeing you? Okay. I can't see anything right now. I hope you guys can see that. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm reading in this card is that You're not equipped to be where you are. It's not the best place for you to be. They're, they could send that ship out to get you and take you with them. Maybe you're going somewhere. Oh, you could, but you've got your mind so focused on that coin. So I want, I don't know. I'm trying to understand. You're juggling. So, 
they're doing a good job, right? They're both, their boats are both upright on that tousled sea. So it's, it's, it's juggling multiple things successfully, right? That is. They're juggling, they're juggling too. This one's juggling out here where they, he shouldn't be dressed. He's, he's way too, it's too hot out there for that coat. That's weird to me. You're not in the right environment for what you want to do, but you're so focused on that coin. So I would say that it's a poor investment of your time and energy. You're obviously worried about money. You're not in the right environment for yourself to get what you want. Um, there, so there's two different ways. So it came in reverse. So I had to read the card first. So in reverse, it's worse. It's debt. It's being overly focused on the material world. And it's worry. You're so worried about something that you're juggling. It doesn't have to be money, but they are showing coins that it's got you in a place where you shouldn't be. You need to move. You need to go to a different place. Or you need to change your clothes. You need to... Something needs to change. That's what I'm getting. You're juggling things right now and struggling. Um... Well, there's too much focus on it then. So if you are juggling things, these people are juggling too, right? But they're on the sea. They're in a boat on the sea. This one's in a boat on the sea. They're where they should be doing multitasking. You're in a spot where you shouldn't be focusing too much on this. So either change your clothes, which means change your attitude, right? Adapt to the environment that you're in is what I'm getting. You're not in the right environment and you're way too focused on the money. So when we focus way too much on the money, it's not going to change. So you have to adapt to the environment that you're in. Or you need to leave and go to a different environment in order to bring in. Like me, I'm going to Sedona. I, ha I, I, I never did really adapt to here. I tried, but it's, it's, too, it's too difficult for me here. So if it doesn't work there, go try something different. If you keep doing the same thing again and again, you're not going to get a different result. This person is way overdressed for a dry desert. There's nothing there. It's not yielding anything. You can look at that coin all you want. You're not going to get anything out of this. Okay, that was it. That was a long message. I have to move along. Gina is next. Thank you. Um, correct for neutrality on all levels. Let me... Let me shuffle. Correct for neutrality on all levels for Gina correct for neutrality. I hope I don't lose you guys. Correct for neutrality on all levels, Gina. Correct for neutrality, Gina. Correct for neutrality, Gina. Okay. Whoa. It's that one there, but I was going to lose my cards. Queen of coins. <laughs> Queen of Pentacles, this is a very hard worker. This is a down-to-earth woman who loves nature, loves animals, is successful in, in what she does. She's generous. She's giving. She's, she's easygoing. She's comfortable. She's efficient. She's knowledgeable. She's done well for herself. People like her. She knows how to delegate authority. She knows the importance of nature, of being outside. Look at she's outside. There's her kingdom, but where is she? She's outside, right? She has skills. Look at the look at she's dressed very, very beautifully. She's got she knows how to protect herself because this is black obsidian, right? That she wears around her neck for grounding and protection. She also knows how important it is to get outside to be grounded, right? She doesn't have a big banquet around her and a bunch of staff around her. She she reminds me of the Queen of England. And I always like that about the Queen of England. Growing up as a Canadian, the Queen is big. I always, I always liked that about Queen Elizabeth. I grew up with Queen Elizabeth because she was always outside. She had her little corgis with her and she was hiking around in the hills and <laughs> a queen outside hoofing it, right? I like that. I like that. And I think of Gina. Gina knows how to have fun. Gina goes out and she goes dancing, right? 
So this is, I just think this is a beautiful message for you. I think that this is showing you that this is really who you are. And you really ought to see yourself as the Queen of Coins. The Queen of Pentacles. It could be that you're going to be very successful in something, right? You've got a smart head for business, but you're also really, really good with family and with, with people. You are. You're very, you're, your nature is very beautiful. And you've got a wonderful sense of humor. So this is just a beautiful message of you, Gina. This is just telling who you are. For all of the people on, that are listening right now that don't know you, I can say that this is Gina. This is what she's like. She's knowledgeable. She's comfortable. She's down to earth. She's real. She knows what's important in her life. And she knows how to have fun. She knows that it's important for her to go out and go dancing. She does it. I just like this. Yeah, you don't have to see yourself that way until spirit says, this is who you are. Look how beautiful you look out in nature. <laughs> this is how spirit says you are. And I'm telling you that this is what I feel that you are. So this is who you are. So that's why you needed to hear this message. Because you don't often see yourself this way. Sometimes that's all we need. It's just to be reminded of who we really are. Right? Right? <laughs> I like it. That was really nice. Yay! Okay. I just I have to turn the camera around every, every couple of seconds so I can say hi. All right. I'm going to flip you back around so I can see again. I can't see. All right. Um, see, even your soul family says that you are. Lisa Ann is next. Okay. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Oh my gosh, my butt is so dirty. <laughs> I'm sitting in the dust. My butt's all dirty. As long as I don't wreck my cards, I'm good. Okay. Correct for neutrality for Lisa. Oh my. How can I do this more efficiently? Help me out, spirit. Come on, help me out here. Correct for neutrality on all levels for Lisa. <laughs> Correct for neutrality on all levels. I'm going to go home and put on my vanilla bean lip balm that I was sent by my sweet friend, Lisa's friend, who lives on the coast. And she sent me two, a little, remember that little anonymous package that I got? It was sent by me, by, by her. And she sent me the most amazing it's just homemade natural lip balm and it, oh, it tastes amazing and it feels good because right now my lips are not happy with this lip crap that I have on. And I think that's where you're going to visit, right, Lisa? Yeah, the raw stuff. <laughs> that's what I have. She sent me two and it was an anonymous gift and I started crying because she sent me Egyptian musk too and I love it. Sweetheart, sweetheart, sweetheart. And I know that those are your really good friends. Okay. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Um, for Lisa. The tower in reverse. This is amazing. The tower in reverse has been coming up in for so many people. So here we see that now the tower doesn't have to be rotten. You know, so many people are afraid of the tower. Because it's like, oh my god, I'm going to lose my job. Or, you know, someone's going to die or <laughs> something Something awful is going to happen with the tower. But the tower doesn't have to be a negative. The tower is a change, right? When the tower comes through your life, now you're looking at here and the house is on fire, right? The, crown, the crown's blowing off the top of, of the castle. The place is blowing up. People are upset. People are crying. This is what's going on here. This is a disaster. The guy's falling out and even the angels aren't stopping that from happening. A tower moment in your life is a change. It's a big change. So... It could mean movement, right? I'm moving. It could mean a loss of a job. It could mean a breakup. It can mean um, a fight with family. It can mean all kinds of situations like that. But in... Re whoops. Sorry. Don't mean to be in the shadow. See, that's a message. I don't mean to be in the shadow. I keep getting the shadow, don't I? So we're reading it in the upright right here. <laughs> yeah, well, what's going on is when you have a tower... When a tower happens, it's because it wasn't built on a solid foundation, right? So the tower in reverse happens. So all of a sudden, all these people that were falling out of that tower, right? I mean, well, actually, that tower is going to burn up. The flames are going to go up. It could be a rebellion. It's an unfair situation. It could be accusations. Um, because when the tower happens, things fall apart, right? Right? Um, and in, in all kinds of ways, but the tower in reverse, it, it can be, 
it can be the opposite too, right? It can be that, okay, here the tower moment has happened, right? The accusations, you know, it could be negative. It just depends. It depends on you. Like if you're saying, I hope it means things are being, it, it, to me, it means that things are going to be rebuilt because it's already fallen, right? The tower has fallen. So in reverse, I would say it's going to be rebuilt now. Whatever it is that happens with the tower, it has to happen. Spirit comes and sweeps it away because it wasn't built on a solid foundation. It wasn't good, whatever it was. So in reverse, it's one of two things. You're either before this point where you're throwing accusations at people, you're judging people, or it's telling you that the tower has already fallen. And so now things are on their way to being rebuilt. And if there has been an illness, it's on the way to recovery. So you know what's happening in your life right? Sometimes things, yes, sometimes the best thing in the world is, well, what is that saying, right? Some things fall apart so better things can come together, right? And sometimes things fall apart with the same people so that they can be rebuilt better because things weren't working in that, in that way. It's either knock the tower down and start somewhere completely different or knock that tower down and let's start again, right? That's our choice. All right. Hold on, I can't see. <laughs> oh, I've got that stupid thing. Okay. Did you? Oh, it works? Okay, you're welcome. Jocelyn is next. Okay. How many people have I read for? This is... I, I thought it would be easier doing the, the cards from the um, Golden Tarot or whatever the hell this is, but it's actually harder for me because <laughs> I don't know tarot very well and I'm just kind of reading the pictures correct for neutrality although you know what I'm supposed to do that it's like work for me it's lessons I need to do that I need to keep up on my on my reading and my intuition okay correct for neutrality on a level it's Jocelyn I'm on five okay correct for neutrality on a level it's Jocelyn this one Queen of Wands in reverse. Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> oh, I will tell you that's scary because I am a Queen of Wands. And she's a fiery person. This is determination. This is forward movement. But if you've got a Queen of Wands in reverse, that crown is going to stab you. And she's, this is a fiery temper. This is somebody, this is somebody who would accuse you. This is, this is negative. This is not a good uh, place to be. This is not a good place to come across, and this is not a good person to have around. Um, this is where you want a tower to fall. Um, this could be jealousy. This could be somebody, because the Queen of Wands is very uh, passionate, um, very, very, very forward, right? Very um, excited, determined. I mean, it's like an Aries. You think about an Aries. This is an Aries in reverse. <laughs> so this would be jealousy. This would be um, deception frustration um, because she's a very sens sensual person she's got a lot of passion right she goes she when she knows who she loves and she knows how to love and she loves hard right and she's very elegant and she's very together she's very beautiful she's usually very very sexy she's got it all going on so this could be somebody that is jealous this is somebody who is conniving this is somebody who is aggressive and angry and petty all of the negatives so it could be a debate between someone because the Queen of Wands in the upright is not afraid of anything. She goes for it. She has fun. She's passionate. She's excited. She's generous, right? But this is about maybe not thinking of anyone but yourself and being jealous of other people. So I don't know. I'm sorry. This is just a negative atmosphere. So I would say be careful of... Um, she's cro you look what she. You know what I'm looking at? I'm looking at her fingers. She's got these long fingers. And to me, it's a butterfly. Oh my God, I just got the biggest message. Look at the heart. Her hand makes a heart with wings, a butterfly, a flying heart, a sacred heart. Do you see that? She's the butterfly. She's the mother. Or she, she is, she's the mother and she's jealous and she's angry and she's stopping growth because here there's growth, new growth. But in reverse, she's angry about growth. She's disapproving. She doesn't want growth. She's blocking it. 
she has this, she may feel that she is, um, whoever it is she's blocking, she doesn't feel that they belong. She's judging them. She's looking down her nose at them. She's wearing this crest, this lion's crest, this Leo crest. This could be a Leo. This doesn't have to be a female, it could be a man. There's gossip going on in the background. This butterfly, oh my God, I just got the loudest message for myself. This is who is blocking my twin and I. A jealous Leo. Oh my God. Sorry guys. Because upright, she's got truth on her, her gems. The, the blue is truth. But in reverse, she's dropping the truth. She's not speaking the truth. She's some, pretending to be somebody she's not. So beware of whoever that is. You know who this is about? Wow, I do too, and it really sucks. But it gave me a message looking at that flower. That So somebody who's pretending to be sacred, somebody who's pretending to be a friend, somebody who's pretending to be something that they're not, and they are a Leo. That's who the butterfly was. Someone who used to write to me all the time, they were the butterfly. And Spirit told me that when I went to Sedona and I took the guillotine that I found on the trail and I went and I buried that, remember I buried that guillotine in the water of the peace pipe and I said, I'm not going to fight with you. I'd rather have you put this in your pipe and smoke it, the peace pipe. I drowned it. I drowned the negative energy. And what I heard from Spirit out loud was, the butterfly is the guillotine. And the guillotine is what was wanting to come down and chop off your heads. Off with your head, says the queen. And I heard from spirit, the queen has been overthrown. That's another message to me. The queen has been overthrown. Ha! Ha! I only say ha because when you do bullshit, karma comes back and bites you in the ass. So you're, she's, this one, he or she, is going to have that crown up their ass by spirit. And, and they're going to do it on their own because I refuse to fight. So if this person is in your life... Don't waste your energy, right? Go out there and do this. Go out there and, and spread peace and sunshine. And you know what? Wish her all the best. And a blessings on your journey. I just don't want you part of mine. I take all my energy back. I blocked that person, by the way. They were blocked off of my pages. Wow. That was a loud message for me. Okay, who's next? Um... Ingrid is next. Wonderful. Divine intervention is happening, yes. Well, no, you know what? Divine intervention in the form of karma because this queen has blocked all growth. This queen has blocked us for six fucking years. Six years lying and jealous, manipulative, and making people feel bad because they were jealous. And now it's undone. The queen has been overthrown because who's sitting on this rock right now? Who's sitting on the queen of wands throne? I am. This is my throne. This is my throne. And I didn't get this throne by, by being jealous and fighting. Right? That's why I said I don't want to fight with you. I don't, I don't want to fight with you. I knew that they, they weren't who they said they were all along. I kept saying, you aren't who you say you are. You know? And don't come to me unless you're going to come to me straight. Honest. Who you are. And that's a message for you. Because it's a man. Don't come to me unless you're going to come to me straight. And that person showed themselves as a woman to me. And it was a man. So there's the queen. Happy karma. Okay, let me just juggle. <laughs> let me just juggle my cards. Oh my God, you guys, my battery's dying. How many have I done? Ingrid is next. How many have I done? I can't allow this to die because I have to upload it. I have to save it. Correct for neutrality. I'll, I'll hurry right now. Quick for neutrality. Ingrid. Ingrid is next. What is the next message for Ingrid? I'm going to have to go. The Ace of Wands in reverse. Okay, so the Ace of Wands is literally God handing you. There's the book. Please tell me how many I've done. What have I done? Ingrid is six. Okay, I'll see if I can get another one out. I don't know if I can. God. So the Ace of Wands, you see growth, but it was in reverse. Okay, so here you see the book is open. You see the candle is open. You see this one smelling that rose. There's wind. There seems to be wind blowing at their back. because Or blowing towards their face. Um, but in reverse, the candle's going to go out. The book's going to fall shut. Growth will be upside down. Go, go, growth will be stopped. 
right? I have to listen because I don't know what I'm seeing in this message. There's fire all around in the up. So ace again, wands again is fire, passion, right? Um, and that's a lily that she's, a lily flower. We spoke about the lily. So if it's fiery passion, you've got a creative idea, you've got a project, you've got passion for something, right? New beginnings, um, empowerment, maybe growth, adventure, all kinds of things when it's the ace of wands. But if it's in reverse, it's still good, but it might be you're more excited about something than you should be. Um, you're more enthusiastic than you should be about something you don't really have. It's not really what you think it is. So this is a message about coming back more to the center, like coming back to reality, I would say. Um, it might, you're seeing something for better than it is. It's not, you've got to be realistic. That's what I'm getting. You've got to be more realistic about what's going on. Because you're, it's, it's not, the growth isn't there that you think. The candle's going to go out. The book's going to fall shut. So it's about, um, I would say, come back to the center. Come back to the center and get more realistic. It's more about, um, um, pie, not, um, what is it? Um, not having pie in the sky, beliefs about something. So it doesn't mean that it's bad. It doesn't mean that it's not, that things aren't going to go well. It just means maybe not yet. Maybe not as wonderful as you think. Maybe not. Um, maybe it's not a, as good of idea as you're thinking it's going to be. Um, it's just not enough, enough growth. You might have to do a little bit more research. Um, I'm also getting that things might be closing up. On, a, on something, things might be closing up. I literally heard, and it's not about the reading, I literally heard it's time to go. Correct for neutrality, uh, the next person, whoever this is, Sen. The moon. Okay, so the moon is about secrets. The moon is about, well, the moon is about intuition. Look at all the animal messengers. So there's a, a lobster down here and a crab. Um, the dog, why is the dog, the dog's either having a difficult time over here or he's sniffing something. He's not quite sure about this. The rabbit's got no problem. This one's in his element, the stag. This little, this little rabbit is, uh, this is a little rabbit over here. It's quite pleased with itself, actually. So this dog is chasing that rabbit, but he's got no hope of going up those steps. Oh, I've got that message. So the moon, secrets coming to light. The dog's going to be exposed. The bottom feeders also are exposed. The moon, your intuition knows something. They're looking down. The intuition is looking at the, at the divine masculine. The moon is looking at her masculine. And this dog is shit out of luck. <laughs> That's literally what I'm getting in that message. The dog, oh, you know what I'm getting is the dogs will stay in chains. Wait till you're announced. We've not yet used all of our graces, says Spirit. We've got something up our sleeves. The dogs will stay in chains. Everyone's competing for a love they will not receive. This dog, the dog is going to be staying down here. This rabbit's going straight to the divine masculine. Both are very equipped to handle themselves there. And these bottom feeders, they're not getting anywhere. I find it really interesting, too, that there are palm trees here. And there's this looks like... I mean, it looks like snow to me, but it does. It looks like snow, but it could be sand. Maybe it's sand, but whatever. I, I No, because look at the tall fir trees over here. It's really odd. So you're coming out of a... So these ones, the dog and the bottom feeders, they're in this palace. And look where the divine masculine is and the rabbit, which is fertility and forward movement and growth, right? It might be smart to leave this palace this is where this one is no longer a part of this where the bottom feeders are this has all been exposed and this dog is no way getting out of there that's what I'm reading when I look at the moon now the moon is talking about trusting your intuition that's what I'm getting when I look at that you guys have to also use your intuition it makes sense to you okay because 
you also have to use your intuition. When you look at that, what does that tell you? Right? Because that is what the message is talking about, is about using your intuition. The moon is talking about using your intuition. Focusing on what you think that this means. But that's what it means to me. It means to me that there are two completely different environments here. First of all, what is a lobster and a crab doing here? They don't belong there. So somebody is inhabiting this palace that does not belong there. That's what I'm saying. These ones do not belong in this palace. This regal, beautiful elk, the money's going to the elk. Fertility's going to the elk. Spirit is shining down on this wise one. Look at the antennae. This one is smart. This one is listening to spirit. This one is in conjunction with spirit or with his divine masculine. This is divine masculine. This is the divine feminine. They are a team. We're on each other's team, right? Wait till they're announced. We've not yet used all of our graces. Remember spirit said things are not as they appear. We are a team. These ones, they don't belong inside these palace gates. They think that they are more than, than they are. They think that they are something like that, 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 that uh, Queen of Wands that had that regal, uh, what is that called? Like a family crest, right? They, they see themselves as above the others. But look what they are. They're just dogs and bottom feeders. That's what I get from it. Yes, a leap of faith. This one's taking a leap of faith to follow the divine masculine. Look how strong he is. He knows what he's doing. He's totally connected to. Now, the divine masculine, we all have the divine feminine and the divine masculine in us, right? There may be somebody escaping this to come to the one that's listening to spirit. Follow me. Remember I showed you the moose? This is a moose. Remember the moose totem that we got the other day and the dish, the psychic antennae? You have been very connected since childhood. You know but you may have been here amongst these ones where you don't belong. It's time to take a leap of faith and be that one that listens to the moon or maybe you already have because I heard in my dreams, I think it was in a dream, it might have been in a, in, a, in a message that Spirit just said to me. I took one bite of that bottom feeder and look what she did to my life. And that's the bottom feeder. One bite and they fucked up this person's life and they left. And now they're out there. But it's a better place to be than this. Look at the palace stairs are crumbling. They're not, they're ill-equipped to be out there. These ones cannot survive out there, but these ones can because they've got spirit. This, like I said, if you understand that a palace, a rich house, a fancy car, clothes are not as important as this, if you understand that this is more important, you are awakened. And that is what these two are. Ooh, I love this message. I freaking love that message. <laughs> And I think Sandy asked for a card, and I'm going to see if I can get a card for Sandy really quick before I hang up, okay? I'm going to try. Let me turn you around again. I've been given one warning already. Correct for neutrality. So one warning already, and then the, I have to go as soon as I see it the next time. Correct for neutrality on all levels. I like that message because, yeah, Sandy, karma is, I mean, not karma. What is it? Divine intervention? I think that people have stepped in. I think people have woken up. Remember what I said about the moon? It's just a shadow, but it's pretty. Coming over the sunflowered hills. It's just a shadow, but it's beautiful. And you can see it. Well, now it's more than just a shadow, right? Maybe a shadow is someone that's got your back. I got your back. I'm right here. You may not be able to see me, but I got your back. I don't know if you guys can see her or him, the moon, the divine masculine. But he's getting a little brighter. Yeah, there he is right there. All right, let me not waste time. Let me shuffle these cards quickly for Sandy. Correct for neutrality. Sandy, what is Sandy's message? Correct for neutrality on all levels for Sandy. Ooh, I knew it was going to be that one. Page of Cups. All right, so somebody's coming with an offer. Look at that little fish jumping out. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> Yahoo. It's not a big offer. Actually, it is a pretty big offer. A page of cups. Look at the size of that. Now, a page is a young one, right? It could be a youthful. Um, it could be a youthful energy. It could be a youthful person. But look at the size of that freaking cup. And there's a fish jumping right out of it. Fish talk about abundance. So there's there is this one, and this one's got this scroll. What does that say? Oh, it's in a different language. But they're on the sea, and he's kind of surprised to see that fish in his cup. <laughs> Don't you think? I think he's a little surprised to see that fish in his cup. And the fish has got something to say. So somebody's coming forward to say something. There's information coming forward. 
and he's got a lot to say. So you think you're drinking that wine, but all of a sudden, a fish pops out of that cup, and you're listening. You're listening. So you're a, this is a young one, or like I said, a youthful personality. It could be a young person, but they have a message. They're bringing a message too. Look, this one has a message too. So the Page of Cups is a, is a strong tie to something. It's an emotional connection because look at the water. This is a Pisces. This is my twin. So because you can see the energy of this one. They're very calm. They're very gentle. They're very loving. And they listen. Right? They don't speak very much. They're intuitive. They understand, however, how smart it is to listen to the animal messengers. I have a message to bring too, but look, I'm not talking first. I'm listening to you. Isn't that interesting? I'm listening. So there's a change of some sort. I had a message to deliver. I came all the way to deliver this message, but instead, a message is being delivered to me. I'm listening to myself because I'm a Pisces here and you're a Pisces too. Interesting. I mean, it doesn't have to be. This could be you, Sandy, listening to me. I'm a Pisces moon, right? You have a very youthful personality. You have a message to deliver as well. We both do. We both have a message to deliver. Of a, and, there, and we're emotional. And we understand how important it is to pay attention to the animal messengers. You and I both are so tapped in. This, I believe, is that's what I'm seeing right now, is there's a Pisces talking to you. That's a fish talking to you. There's an animal totem talking to you, the fish. So look up fish totem. That's your message. You have a message to deliver. You're going to have, and you're going to, and you do do that like I do. You see your animal totems, and then when you do, you share the message. But you're listening right now. You're not talking. Even though you have something to say, you're not talking. You're listening. So to me, this is us right now. You have got a lot to say. You've got a lot of wisdom. You're very knowledgeable. You're very passionate. You're very youthful. You're very, you dress very beautifully. You're wealthy. You have a lot of, of wonderful things to be grateful for. And you've got a lot of knowledge. Look at this beautiful crown on your head. And yet you're listening to this humble fish in a cup. That shows your humility. I love that. I feel that this, is a, this shows who you are. I get, I'm very emotional right now. You're a very beautiful person. And yet you're listening to this little fish that's sitting in this cup. And look at how the animal messengers are so ha happy and comfortable around you. Three birds. The birds always come to you and talk to you. There's four birds, Sandy. Four birds. This one's telling you something. This one, you need to look up this bird. They've got a long beak. I looked them up recently at, um, in one of my readings. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of the bird right now. Sandpiper, it could be as well. But there's four of them, and that means angels supporting you in everything that you do. There's no reason for fear. And even if things do get a little bit dark and you get a little bit emotional because of the messages that you receive, that's okay. Just listen. You don't need to say anything about it. You don't need to figure it out. Spirit will let you know what, you, what, what it means when you need to know. And then you can share it. This is perfect for you, Sandy. I love this. This is perfect. I love it. I love this. Okay, you guys, I have to put these away because right now we still have the card. I mean, the, what is this? We still have the phone working. It hasn't died yet. <laughs> and I want to be able to save this so I can share it on YouTube with other people who weren't able to see it or for the ones that came a little bit late. So I'm picking things up. I'm not, oh my gosh, my, my rear end is completely black, covered in dirt. I'm going to um, hike us back up the hill. And I want to show you guys the other side of the hill while the sun is out because then you can see, for the ones who didn't see it before, how incredibly woo, glorious it is. I want to make sure I don't lose any of my cards. Oh, Lord, Sherry. <laughs> I have to walk. At least, I, at least I'm going to walk towards my car and no one's going to see my butt except for me. Well, I won't see it either. But because uh, it's completely covered in mud. Okay, let's just see if there's any cards on the ground. No? Okay, cool. We're, high, we're hoofing it up the hill. 
Hold on. Goodbye, beautiful spot. This was gorgeous. Thank you for not having any rattlesnakes show up. It feels okay. I'm not going that way. <laughs> I try to blast my way. I'm such a trailblazer. I barrel my way through and it's like, okay, that bush is not moving, Sherry. And I'm trying to hike in flip-flops and they keep falling off. Hold on, I can't even see what anyone's saying. Ah! <laughs> thank God! Oh God, thank you, thank you. My sage is holding me. Holding me. Whew. Eureka! <laughs> we made it! <sighs> okay. <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna read your messages real quick. <sighs> I can't see what you guys are reading or writing, I'm sorry. <sighs> Let's take a look. Okay. We're gonna, I don't remember how I came up, you guys. Shoot. This is what I do. I come up and I don't remember how I got here. Okay, it must be this way. <laughs> oh God, this is not fun. It doesn't look that bad to you guys, but to go down in flip flops, I really don't wanna land on my ass. So I'm gonna go on this side. I dig my heels in as I go down so I can try and stop myself from falling ass over tea kettle. Oh my God. That kid had really awesome smelling musk cologne on. Woo! Okay, so this isn't as sexy for you guys to see, but I just wanna keep you with me if I can. My phone won't die, I hope. I want you to see the whole hill covered with the flowers with their eyes open because they started to shut their eyes on the other side. Okay. Oh, I should have brought a stick. I have all these walking staffs and do I use them ever? No, because they're always in my way when I hike up. I guess because they're made to help you when you hike down. Here we go. See, here's the, here's the forget-me-nots. They're everywhere. How could you forget them? Look how cute they are. Oh look, somebody's, that's a really good way to do it. Hey, what are those things called? I can't remember what those things are called. Whoops, sorry. He sent up a little, a droid. A droid, isn't that what they are? I don't know what they're called. Okay, check it out, isn't that cute? Everyone's taking pictures. I don't have any pictures of me. Okay, look. This is what I want you to see. Look at that, you guys. Isn't that so pretty? And look at all the purple down here. See? Oh, okay, that was the third warning. Third warning from my phone that says I have to charge my phone or it's gonna die. So, see if I can scramble down this hill without falling so you guys can see the whole hill. Oh, come on, please don't die before I get down to the bottom. Oh my God. I gotta go home and pack for Sedona. <laughs> Jeez. Ah. So far, so good, so far, so good, so far, so good. Okay, hold on. Just a minute. That's pretty with the moon over the hill. Right there. That's cool. Okay. Okay, hold on. That's pretty cool. Look at that couple there, how cute. I want a partner to do that with. Spirit says it's coming soon, or he is. Look, look, and look at the clouds coming over the hill. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Okay, you guys. Hold on. I'm gonna say goodbye. I can't see anybody there. I'm glad that you're here with me. Thank you. 
Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go upload this. I'll talk to you guys. Thank you for helping me be my secretary. I love you. Bye.